Hi everyone, this uh, is a presentation about discussion circles. I guess you know that if you clicked on it, but um, what is a discussion circle? Well, um, basically it's a semi-synchronous discussion among students, and I'm sort of coining the term semi-synchronous here, but what that means is the students meet synchronously on their own time, it doesn't have to be during class time. So from the pers uh, perspective of the professor, it's not synchronous, but from the perspective of the students, it kind of is. Um, and it's a discussion that takes place away from the teacherly gaze, so you're not watching them while they're having this discussion, although you will watch a recording of it later, probably. Um, it's student-led, so because you're not there, the students have no choice but to lead each other through the discussion. One of them takes the role of leader, as you'll see. Um, the teacher can provide topics, I usually do for my students. Um, you don't want them just talking about I don't know, whatever young people talk about these days. You want them talking about class material. So um, you do provide the topics, and sometimes, in my case, I provide even the questions, um, but you don't uh, tell them what to say, necessarily. Um, it involves a, a certain amount of role-playing, so the students are not simply voicing their own opinions, they're also playing a role within the discussion while they're doing that. Uh, and this is Partly to partly to ensure that everyone has something to say, and also to um, take a little bit pressure a little bit of pressure off them, so they're not necessarily being themselves in the discussion. In case they're naturally shy, um, giving them a role to play gives them sort of permission to participate and not put themselves or their own uh, face at risk, so to speak. So the point of a discussion circle is to build understanding. Everyone together working together to build each other's understanding, to build understanding together, right? <laughs> wow, that's scary. Um, and again, this happens when the instructor's not watching. So the students, uh, you hope, feel a little more uh, accountable and a little more um, motivated to participate, right? This is my actual eyes. I didn't know my eyes looked this scary from close. Okay, you're also guaranteeing uh, that each member needs to participate, and uh, the next rules will make clear how that happens. So the roles are discussion leader, harmonizer, reporter, devil's advocate, and interrupter. I've adapted this from someone, and I'm not sure who, but I'm not the first person to think of this idea anyway. Um, I find the discussion leader and the harmonizer are very important roles to have. The devil's advocate is also very important. I teach ESL, so my students sometimes are taught not taught that it's rude to disagree, even disagree constructively with other people, so I think it's very important to have a devil's advocate um, role, someone who disagrees as a matter of their job. And for ESL especially, I like having an interrupter. If my students come from a culture where it's rude for them to speak over each other, they might be shocked that Americans do this to each other. Uh, and I like to sort of um, acculturate them to the idea that Americans do this and that their classmates will also do this when they get into their main um, undergraduate or graduate programs at our school, SUU. Um, but for your domestic students, if you're not an ESL teacher, you might not want to have an interrupter. Um, it might not seem like a skill you want to encourage <laughs> um, or that they need practice with. And uh, I do recommend keeping the devil's advocate and uh, the harmonizer and the discussion leader. You also might not need the reporter, um, but I use all five of these, and if I don't have five students in a, in a discussion circle, I usually get rid of the interrupter first. Anyway, uh, a little bit more on what these are. The discussion leader is the one who leads the discussion. I guess if you understand English, you've got that much, but um, they ask questions. That's their primary role. Also, beginning and ending the discussion formally, and last, recording the discussion, and this is important because they're meeting um, on Zoom, uh, especially now during this um, sort of, yeah, not sort of, during this pandemic time, the students are having their discussions on Zoom. So the, the discussion leader is responsible for setting up the meeting, setting up the time, inviting other students, recording the meeting, and then emailing me the recording after the meeting's over. During the meeting itself, they're the one who's asking the questions and starting and stopping people. Okay, um, so the discussion leader does a lot of things, and there are some things that I have to sort of tell them that they cannot do as the discussion leader. They do not talk the most. The discussion leader is there to facilitate discussion with other people, not to be the one who, who's always answering every question and then taking up most of the air in the room. Um, 
the discussion leader also sometimes has to be proactive in stopping other people from sucking up all the air in the room. Um, and this is one of the more, let's see, one of the skills of the discussion leader that's not obvious. Um, when people get this role for the first time, they often think it'll be really easy, but then they have someone that they need to tell to yield the floor to someone who hasn't talked yet. And that's where it gets uh, a bit hard, um, especially in my classes, because my classes are ESL. Um, so uh, I recommend being open about this when you're setting up your first group of discussion circles. Okay. Oh, and obviously, yeah, the discussion leader, in addition to everything else, can answer questions, um, uh, but isn't primarily responsible for that. So there's a role called uh, the harmonizer. The harmonizer is the one who makes everyone else feel good about participating. And yes, does things like passes the baton proverbially or sometimes physically to other people when it's their turn to talk, and especially people who haven't really participated much yet, and then thanks them for their contributions, whether they agree with them or not. Again, um, in my classes, this is a language-related skill that I want my students to have. In any other discussion, though, it's important uh, that everyone feel like their con contributions are valued, whether or not anyone agrees with them. Okay, so the harmonizer makes everyone feel good about participating and, of course, participates in the discussion him or herself as well. The harmonizer does not have to agree with everyone. And again, this is a place where my students need special instruction. Appreciating someone's input is not the same as agreeing with them. So if someone says, I think the sky is green, you can say, thank you for participating. Thank you for your opinion. What does everyone else think about the sky being green? You don't have to agree that the sky is green. Um, you also don't want to let, like the discussion leader, you don't want to let the most talkative people just fill the entire room with their, their voice, right? So you want to get participation from more people and make everyone feel that they are appreciated for being part of the discussion. So uh, the reporter is basically the note taker. This is the least obviously active uh, role. Uh, mostly because the reporter is listening and trying to take careful notes of what other people say. So um, the reporter will ask other people to repeat, try to get the main points of what they're saying, the gist, not every word, um, and participating also when asked a question. Um, the reporter doesn't just sit quietly, so the reporter still wants to um, make sure that he or she understands what other people are saying. So part of getting the gist of the conversation is asking people to repeat things or asking people to um, paraphrase their own points or rephrase their own points, etc. Um, so the reporter is not just um, passively sitting quietly, although they tend to talk less than the other members. Um, and yeah, summarizing is a really important skill for a reporter, catching the gist, not writing down every word that is not transcribing, right? It's not a court reporter. It's a, a different kind of reporter. Okay, so the devil's advocate is trying to productively disagree with people, um, disagree thoughtfully, and ask for more details or examples if you don't have something to disagree with. And that can be a sort of disagreement in and of itself, um, asking someone to elucidate a point that they've sort of glided over. Um, and also gives their own opinion when asked. Um, so the devil's advocate, the hardest part that my students have said in the past about being a devil's advocate is listening carefully enough and understanding enough in order to be able to disagree uh, sensibly, sensibly. I mean, in a way that makes sense. So the devil's advocate is not just being mean and saying, no, 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 no. You have to disagree thoughtfully and disagree with the substance of what someone says. Um, so yeah, you don't want to disagree without understanding. Okay, the last one's the interrupter. I'll go quickly over this one. And um, again, this is something that my ESL students need special practice with um, because they're not used to interrupting or being interrupted when they talk. Um, it's basically a sort of a devil's advocate. Uh, I don't want to say on steroids. I guess maybe that's what it's like, um, being more aggressive with your questions or, or disagreements than normal. Okay, so um, if I have worksheets that go with each of these roles, so if you want them, go ahead and ask me. If not, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's given you a new, uh, some new, the germ of new thoughts. I don't want to use germ right now. The seed of new thoughts uh, for how to run discussions in class. Thank you.